And we're visiting with Joshua Bell, who is appearing with the Virginia Symphony Orchestra as part of the Virginia Arts Festival, uh, sort of uh, a headline event, the early part of May, May 2nd, May 3rd, and May 4th. That's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, pretty much all around the area, Virginia Beach at the Sandler Center, uh, Norfolk at Chrysler Hall, and Newport News Ferguson Center for the Arts. Thank you for joining us, Josh. Thank you. So you're per- you're going to be performing Lalo's Symphony Espanol. Yes, yeah. So it's a one of my favorite pieces. It's it's a piece I've been playing, gosh, since I was 11 years old. So uh, although it's a piece that you don't hear that often anymore, it used to be in favor, you know, in the old days with Heifetz and Chrysler and all those greats. Um, it was a, it was a standard, um, and now it's you don't hear it as often. But I think it's it's an amazing piece and a real. Uh, crowd pleaser uh, as well. Well, it's got a lot of uh, fireworks, especially toward the end. There, it, it really takes off and and shows off the the virtuosity of the of the player. And it's amazing it to me. Amazing to me that you say you've learned you've been playing this since you were eleven years old. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty five years. Yeah, that's um, that's a long time yeah. to know a piece of music. I should know it by now, but still, well, still you know, certain things giving me problems. <laughs> have you have you um, have you changed your you know your performance of this work over the? I'm sure you have changed it in twenty years. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah, yeah. It's it's well, it's true of any piece. You know, as you do it all throughout your life, you, you change. Um, um, you know how you approach it, and and that's the fun of it is that you keep reexamining these pieces and. Um, and, uh, so yeah, so, so it's, it's, it changes all the time and I see different things in the music. I, um, uh, and hopefully I've, um, technically as well, I've managed to figure out new ways to do things in a, in a more elegant ways. And, uh, uh, I think as I've gotten older, I've seen the depth in the music and even in this music that sometimes people write off as being a showpiece. Um, you know the the slow movement, for instance, I think is one of the most beautiful things written for the instrument. And yes, it's sort of a, it's a hidden it's a hidden aerial uh, uh, movement that's very dark and and just beautiful. Yeah, it's um, really it's a hidden gem within the work. It's uh, kind of yeah. I almost want to say it gets lost because uh, people are sort of expecting that you know the. The, uh, the the sort of rousing finale that it has, um, you you've got an interesting uh, day ahead of you here. It looks like I'm I, I'm seeing here on on this uh, information from your manager that you're going to be demonstrating a Strad at Christie's. Oh, actually, I did that uh, just did that uh, this morning at uh, for on the Today Show. Um, so I was up at six a.m. to do that, Oof. but I was uh, I was over there. Uh, always fun when the, when to get to play on a new Stradivarius. This one was was had been sort of out of circulation for eighty years or something like that. And, and uh, eighty years, and, uh, yeah, something like that. It was it was part of a, a private collection that was sort of hidden away. And um, of course. Um, I have my own Stradivarius, which I love, uh, right. made in 1713. That's what I'll, I'll be bringing that one uh, naturally to um, Virginia. But uh, I've always loved Stradivarius. <laughs> uh, right, I, I don't know just, why. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> Seems kind of silly to say it. But my teacher, um, Joseph Gingold, had a Strad. and I, uh, So when I was studying the Lalo with him when I was 12 and 11, um, he had this Strad, which he would occasionally let me play a few notes on and right. and always wanted to have one someday so now this is now my third Stradivarius that I've owned and, and this one's I think I'll have for a while because I have uh, even the one I tried at Christie's that uh, that they plan to sell for about 10 million dollars um, <laughs> I still prefer mine so well well that's good that. to know I was going to ask you if, you if you have an interest in this violin that you tested today <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, so uh, every violin has, has its unique voice, and yeah. I wish I could own, you know, have all of them, but or two of them even. But uh, I'm, I feel incredibly lucky to have one, and it's, um, and uh, and it's an amazing, amazing instrument. Of course, recently you uh, you got to help. I, I read somewhere you got to help out uh, celebrating Neville Mariner's 90th birthday. Yes, that must have been a lot of uh, fun. Yeah, well, it was, it was nice. It was very touching, actually. To be part of that celebration because and, um, and inspiring because uh, Sir Neville Mariner he conducted um, besides the company Murray Pariah and, and a Mozart Concerto he uh, conducted Elgar's Enigma Variations mm. at the age of ninety and and in a fantastic and exuberant way uh, so it's 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 certainly inspiring to us people uh, who are younger than that 
and aspire to be, have a career at the age of 90 in music. It's, it's, it's amazing. And, and also my connection with his orchestra, yes. uh, uh, the Academy of St. Martin the Fields. I'm now their music director, so it's, um, it was very nice to be a part of that. Yes, and you're going to soon be working with HBO on a documentary series uh, involving the Academy of St. Martin in the Fields. Uh, yes, well, just, just this week I'm, I'm, I'm involved with, they have a sort of ma- master class series, as they call it. Um, I'm going to be working with um, some students from the Young Arts program that will be coming to New York. We're going to rehearse and play a concert in my, my own home. Um, which I like to do concerts in my in my house, my apartment in New York, mm. uh, for an audience, and then we'll go to London where they're going to kind of hang around while I'm recording the Bach concertos with the Academy of Martin the Fields, and and um, also we'll, we're going to I'm going to perform with the the kids there in London at a bit, at a kind of uh, pop venue. That we're going to make a little fun event out of it. So nice. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And then you you perform here, of course, uh, here in a couple. Then of weeks. Then I come straight back, yeah, straight back from London from recording the the Bach. I think I have one or two days break and right to Virginia. So so and it, and uh, I'm glad it's the Lalo. It's a piece that I've been playing for for um, the last few months. So it's sort of in my fingers and a piece that I'm you know I will feel comfortable coming back from this recording to um, to do. Right, and then after that, you're off to Los Angeles, and you're going to be performing under Gustavo Dudamel for the, as I understand, that is true. I understand the different first, piece. first time in the U.S. that you're performing with him. Um, that is true. I hadn't thought about that. I guess um, that is true. Um, uh, I'm doing the Sibelius Violin Concerto. I've only worked with him one time before, I believe, in, in Venezuela, so... Um, so it'll be nice to be reunited with him. He's a great uh, conductor and, and uh, of course, the orchestra there is great. So, um, yeah, a lot of fun things on the horizon. Well, we're looking forward to hearing your, your, your uh, well, we'll say 35-year-old performance of the Symphony Espanol by Lalo. And, uh, of course, interested to hear your, your, um, your, your panache with the violin with this, uh, with this particular piece of music. It's a wonderful piece of music, and uh, we, we know the audiences are really, really going to enjoy it. Joshua Bell, thank well, you thank so you. thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Looking forward to coming. We we'll look forward to see you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Take care.